Hey there, Patty Dominguez with episode 109 of the Positioning to Profit podcast. Thanks for being here. Hope you're enjoying your summer. If you are in the U.S., if you're outside the U.S., like my guest Charlotte Heald, I guess they are in the mid in the middle of winter. Uh, Hopefully you're keeping warm. (laughs) So today's episode is going to be all around transitioning careers. You know, how to really know when it's time to change. And for some people, it can be a really scary leap, but let's face it. Where I was, for example, when I was 22 or 23, when I finished school and I was thinking about my career, I am nowhere near what I was thinking back then, right? In fact, did you know, according to this LinkedIn article I have here in front of me, that by age 50, the average person has held 12 different jobs in an effort to find, quote unquote, the right fit. And so this also requires changing careers completely, but let's face it, that can be a scary proposition. However, in this day and age with everything going on in the world, more and more people are transitioning over to an online career, meaning doing the thing that they're doing, whether it's coaching, starting an entrepreneurial endeavor, being a consultant, and then also tapping into the power of the online world. So lots of people are doing it. And that's exactly what Charlotte did. She shares her story of what she has been doing since once upon a time being a nurse and then transitioning into what she's doing now successfully and how her calendar is book full. So I think this is a very inspirational story that can help you too if you are in that situation thinking about transitioning careers. And even if you're not, take a listen because there's always something that you can receive from successful stories like what Charlotte is sharing. So with that. Thanks for being here again. And here we go. go. Hey there, I'm Patty Dominguez. You're about to discover what it means to position your brand and your business to stand out. This show explores the stories of small business owners just like you who are bringing their message out to the world and impacting their tribe. So if you want to take your business to a category of one status, then hang with me because this podcast shares everything you need to know about how to be more prolific with your brand so that you can have more profits. Charlotte Heald, welcome to the Positioning to Profit show. I am so happy to have you here all the way from New Zealand, no less. Thanks, Patty. It's great to be here. I know. It's so, we were just uh, talking before we hit the record button, how it's a, a like a yucky day. And I, I, I do forget that it's opposite in terms of the weather and the seasons. And I'm always like, oh, it's freezing over there. Oh my God. Like it's always a surprise as if it's a surprise when I should know better by now. But um, it, anyway, it's so good to have you here. And tell me where specifically in New Zealand are you? So I live in Northwood, which is um, on the east coast of the North Island. So we, um, we, we're we about 400 metres above sea level. So um, just last week, we actually had some snowfall, which was uh, kind of exciting, kind of not exciting on the farm in the middle of carving. But um, yeah, so we, we're high enough that we get the occasional snow, not regular, but we also have some really beautiful winters, um, mountain views. New Zealand's pretty small, so it's only like an hour's drive to the beach and I don't know, 10 minute drive and we can be in the mountains walking. So Amazing. it's a special place. Oh, yeah. it's so special. And then um, you and your husband own a farm? Yes, we do. Yes, we have um, an organic um, regenerative dairy farm here um, where we we farm with our our three children. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's definitely a big driving force behind, um, you know, my passion for um, agriculture in New Zealand and, and sustainable practices. So. It's pretty so cool. beautiful. Well, I am yeah. so excited you're here because even before we hit the live button, um, you were talking about how you used to be once upon a time a nurse and you were in this moment of transition after having three children, recognizing that you needed a way out of that. So I was thinking, I'm like, my gosh, Arla, I didn't even know that that was your situation, but I have to believe in this day and age with all these things that are happening in the world that people are looking at starting a new career. I always call it an encore career. Like you've had this professional background and then you migrate into something new and exciting. And so do you, um, will you please share, I should say just your background and now where you are and how you got to where you are. 
Absolutely. So um, when I left school, I trained as a registered nurse and um, my my first and only job was in rural primary health in our, our local town. So I worked as what's called like a practice nurse. So alongside the GPs and a really busy um, rural practice where we were dealing with um, a wide variety of stuff every day, you know, like there was the accident and emergency side, but also the, um, you know, the routine um, health and wellbeing stuff. And um, I gained so much experience in that career. I really, I enjoyed what I did. Um, And my passion all along really was around health promotion and well-being. And I was really interested in holistic practices. And so after having my third child, when it, it just, I had three young ones at home and I was involved in the farm business. It was just not really practical for me to continue um, in, in the community that I'm in working in that role. It was just, it was just a bit much. And it was a challenge letting go of, you know, my registration. And, um, you know, like there's this kind of thing, once a nurse, always a nurse. And, and I believe that there's always a nurse within you. But when you let go of your registration, you know, you it's, it's quite a big deal. And so I let go of it knowing that there was something else out there for me. And it was a massive leap of faith because I didn't have a clue what that something else was, but I knew that at the right time it would, it would arrive and it did. So when I found um, through a friend of a friend and those sort of really cool connections that just come from nowhere, um, I met a woman who had done some health coach training through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition in New York. And when I talked with her about what she was doing now in her life, having done that training, I just knew, I knew that was exactly what I needed to do. And so um, it came about at a time when my own health had kind of hit a wall and I needed to do some serious looking um, at how I was going to heal myself. Um, from autoimmune disease. So it was a training that gave me, it, it created an opening for the career that I'd kind of been, the encore career, as you were saying, um, mm-hmm. that I'd been looking for, but it also supported me to, to heal my body and to restore my own well-being. So it was just like the biggest win. Um, and even better still, I was seeing clients um, nine months into the training and it evolved from there. So I guess it's about three years down the track and um, probably within probably about 18 months, two years ago, my, my cousin, who's an accountant, said to me, so Charlotte, tell me, is this, um, is this a hobby or is this a serious business? And it hit me, <laughs> hit me sideways. So I was like, oh, you know, just kind of pottering along, had a few clients. It felt kind of good. It was easy. It was fun. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa, actually, no, this is not a hobby. This is going to be a serious business. And it was around the same time that I started to do a lot more work on myself and learn more about my business. And then I learned more about positioning from you and then, and had that kind of moment of realization that I could be a whole lot more and serve a whole lot more people. If I, if I took myself and my, my business more seriously and yeah, the opportunities have just flown on from there and it's been, yeah, it's been definitely the best thing that I, the best route I could have taken, I guess. I'm so happy for you. And I know that you, well, okay. So here's one question I have before you started or or going into your Institute for Integrative Nutrition um, certification, what do you wish somebody would have told you like right after that? Because I find that a lot of people, they complete the certification and then they think that that's all they need when they really have to focus on the marketing of the thing that they're doing. Mm. And I know that can become a bit of a conundrum for people. They get kind of stuck or frozen and like, why isn't this working? And so what tips would you give having been um, on that side of just, you know, after the certification is complete? Absolutely. So there was an emphasis on niching, um, which I think you guys call n- niching. Niching. <laughs> yeah, niching. Yeah, niche. I niche. niche. I know. You young. say it the right way. We Americans say like it's niche. Kiwi accent. Um, and so, yeah, there was an uh, an emphasis on on really finding your niche and honing that. But like everyone knows when you start out, you're just like, oh my God, I'll take anyone. I'll take anyone. I just want to, you know, like get some rungs on the board and get going. And I guess in a way that was, that was true for me, but generally I wasn't attracting the people I wanted to work with but um you know like rural woman that that was sort of like a, um, an area that I I knew to focus on but it wasn't until I really niched down further and further that um things started to open up so I think um when I have these conversations with people going into new careers and things um you know coaches things like that now I I'm, my advice is always like you really have to hone your niche as hard as it feels feeling like you might 
you know, like you might narrow things right down and push potential clients away. Niching is absolutely key to, um, you know, to your growth and to attracting the, the clientele that you want. And how would you explain why, why is it important in your opinion? Well, I think it's important because um, when you can really narrow it down to, I guess, even creating an avatar of that ideal client, you then know exactly how you're going to market what you're doing rather Mm -hmm. than just kind of like marketing very generally here, there Mm -hmm. and there. And it's a bit fluffy and a bit fuzzy. You know, you can be very specific in your marketing. um, And this is something I'm still honing in on myself, but I've definitely found that, um, you know, like I'm starting to pick up on people in my target market, the things that they say and the things that are problematic for them. And I'm just like, oh my God, Goodness, you know, I've got the the, the spreadsheet or the, the ongoing document that's like all the little things that people say. I type in, I'm like, wow. And even just yesterday, a woman said to me, she said, Charlotte, I saw you at, um, I heard you speak at a, a woman's wellbeing event that you did. And you said, um, you know, when as the woman, as the wife, as the mom in the home, if your wheels fall off, everyone else's wheels fall off, the whole family falls to pieces. She's like, that resonated with me more than anything else that you said that day. She said, that's the one thing I took away. And I was like, wow, isn't that so powerful when, when you know, like you, you kind of know that you're on the right track and that what you're sharing is helpful and, and maybe connecting with people. But she was like, I didn't remember anything else that day, but when I heard that, I knew I had to work with you. So it's really about um, recognizing what it is that that your target market or your your niche really need, what their pain points are, and then really honing in on that in terms of your language and your marketing. And that's been really helpful. Oh, that's so good. I'm so happy to hear you say that because it really does come down to, it's not how much you know and the statistics of what you know and the mathematics of what you know. Um, I think people get or have a tendency to be very left brain about it. And instead you can see how that connection to that woman happened when you made that comment, um, that very poignant comment that also it was emotional for her. All right. We are about halfway through the show and I wanted to stop by with a quick share, exciting share that I have. Have you ever heard of Prolific Cafe? It is my women only business membership, but it's more than a membership. It's more than the content. It's more than the coaching. It actually has one of the best communities out in the marketplace. And the reason why I say that is because we have built a beautiful community of mavens. That's what we call each other. And we really celebrate successes. We help move each other forward. And the support system is actually incredible. And the reason why that's important is because Being an entrepreneur can be a really lonely game. And as much as it's important to have the right type of coaching, of course, having the right courses, of course, it's community. That's the difference maker. And there's nothing like having a support system that's right behind you through the journey. So right now I'm offering a trial of Prolific Cafe. It is by application only. So if you're interested, head on over to prolificcafe.com where we can have a conversation. I can share more about what Prolific Cafe offers and really to see if it's a good fit. So with that, head on over to prolificcafe.com for this exclusive offer, prolificcafe.com. All right, now back to the show. And that is the thing that stopped her in her tracks and said, oh my gosh, that resonated with me because you are, you know it, you live it, you know? And so you pointing out what could happen is a very real risk. It's a very real pain and people will run away from pain or toward pleasure. So in that respect, the way that you did that was absolutely genius because it resonated. It connected with her to say, oh my God, she's holding a mirror in front of me or she's telling me what is possible. Um, And in the case that that you said it, uh, I think it was a very strong call to action that was an emotional trigger. Mm -hmm. So extremely powerful. And that only happens to your point when you niche down, when you understand those potential pain points or roadblocks or landmines or what have you that your that your prospect is having. So that's amazing. Okay. So talk to me about um, in your space, because you are very niche um, where you're helping the rural woman. Um, do you feel like you have competition? And if so, how do you, what is your differentiation secret sauce zag in your opinion? Yeah, so there's definitely um, some competition in my market, even within New Zealand. Um, 
And um, I feel like for me, like I'm very confident in the space that I hold because I know that my approach is, um, you know, it, it's very holistic. And um, I, I mean, I've created a three pillar approach. So there's a very holistic approach. So I'm looking at all areas of someone's life. We're not just kind of targeting nutrition and exercise, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, we are also... Um, don't you love it? Like I know my pillars off by heart now on the spot. I'm like, Oh, what's the other thing? And self care. So I'm all about self care. Self care is my jam. Of course I know that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, holistic, we're all about self care because I believe a foundation of self care and and coming from that place of wholly giving to and caring for yourself before you care for others is, is a massive foundation. And also um, my third pillar is about being very individualized. So I'm not about any one size fits all approach. And I guess that definitely makes me stand out in the market because um, there's still a lot of uh, people in this space who are like, we do this, 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 and this, and that's how it is, you know? Um, Whereas I I like to connect with the individual and and look at their life and, um, you know, treat them as an individual because I don't believe any two people or two people's circumstances or life circumstances are the same. So I think it's really important to hone in on that and and create um, a sustainable lifestyle that that works for them in their life. Yeah, that's so good. And as a result of that, I mean, you have, um, you're pretty fully booked with your one-on-one coaching. And now in terms of how how to scale your business, it looks like you're thinking about um, the one-to-many approach, right? Like, so talk talk to me about what's next in your opinion. And um, is it something that you're excited about? Does it scare you? So what are you confronted with, you know, in terms of making Mm -hmm. that happen? Yeah, so um, I have run some online courses just very, very informally last year through through a Facebook group, very, very simple and easy. And they were really successful. Just um, I called it putting yourself first. And it was all about like self-care 101, essentially. Um, Mm -hmm. And I ran that over six weeks. And so... um, I'm kind of getting a calling to to run through that again, the new and improved edition, because we're always growing, evolving mm-hmm. and learning ourselves. So there's so much more to add. Um, and the exciting part is that I have um, tech support now. So I have a VA who is able to assist me with all the finer details of running that um, in, a, in a sort of more integrative and automated way, which is super exciting. Feels like this big weight's come off. Um, so really, um, there's nothing else in the way at the moment. I just, um, yeah, I'm just moving through the process of making that happen, trying to work out the best time to launch it for my target market because it's quite a busy time um, for many on the farm at the moment. So just trying to work out whether that's going to still this for a little bit longer or whether I just you know, rock it out, do it anyway, because, um, you know, the time's right for me. So just working through that. And then I guess, yeah, working through that space, um, looking to create, um, you know, a Facebook group. And I really, I want to get into a space and create a community because in my own personal experience in the last year, I've seen the value in, in having a really strong community. And while, um, you know, in a lot of my work, I, you know, I'm, I'm working with people who, uh, spending a lot of time in social media and it's not in a real healthy way. I still feel like there's definitely a space for encouraging people to use social media in a really positive way to connect in really healthy spaces because um, you know, I've that. had that experience myself, right? We know about community and and how amazing it feels to have that support and that network around you. So I'm really keen to, to create that um, in my zone. Yeah. I love that. And I think it's so important. I couldn't agree more. It's like, I have personally seen, I mean, I remember even going back two years ago, I I had clients that were men and women. And for me specifically, I kind of migrated over where I wanted to only work with women. And then I thought to myself, I really want to build a community. I feel very called to do that. And so I'm really like, just, I've, it's been so rewarding to have that aspect to my business, to have the community side of it. It's like, it's really, it's a lot more fulfilling than I thought it was going to be. So I'm excited for you because I think that it's such a huge opportunity to see the growth and people like celebrating each other. Um, There's so much there. There's so much there that goes beyond just having the client type of relationship. It's like, oh my gosh, how you've grown and you like really see it. And it's just the best. So I'm really excited for you. Yeah. Um, Okay. So talk to me, what would make this a great year? I know it's a goofy year with everything going on. Um, but as you look back, like in the next, let's say six months to 12 months, what are you envisioning for your business? 
Yeah. So I'm definitely envisioning like the, I mean, the need for me to leverage right now is, is like, there's no other way I need to go because um, yeah. I'm, you know, when you get to the point, it's very exciting when you build your one-to-one up to capacity and then you're like, ah, oh, there's not a lot of wiggle room. So right. um, definitely it's all about leveraging. So it's moving into that one-to-many space so that I can, um, you know, serve and support more women. And that's, that's what really um, inspires me. And yeah, to create my own community, that feels exciting to have um, something like that, that I can lead and create for others. But like you, I guess it sort of, it probably gives you more joy yourself, you know, leading a community and being part of something like that, that you've created. So that's kind of, that's where it's heading for me. I love it. I love it. And totally doable. Um, You're on track. I mean, I know that you've had a lot of successes, even with the events that you're having, like the events you're having and people are really interested and you're, but it's like, it's there. It's right at Mm -hmm. that crossroads of like, okay, time to put something else into motion, which is really exciting and kind of scary at the same time. But I have just really good feeling about what you are offering because it's so very needed. So that's Mm -hmm. awesome. Okay. So now we're transitioning into random questions, fast five. Um, The first of which is what is your idea of perfect happiness? Ooh, good question, Patty. Um, Perfect (laughs) happiness. Do you know what? The first thing that comes to mind is just actually being comfortable, letting go of all the doing and just being with yourself. Like that that place of alignment and self-acceptance, just, you know, being, being, being that's it slowing down and being that's like that's where happiness is created for me I think because we I just love that yeah okay what historical figure do you most identify with um historical figure I'm not sure that I identify so much, but I do really, really look up to the work of Louise Hay, mm-hmm. uh, who wrote the book, You Can Heal Your Life. I really love her work. And that was that probably inspired me a lot in my my own personal health journey, but in the, the journey towards um, you know, supporting other women to create happier, healthier lives as well. Like I really, I really look up to that lady. I think she's pretty special. Yeah, she's so she was amazing. Okay, what's your greatest extravagance? Oh, my greatest extravagance, probably this year when I stepped out of my own comfort zone in my own way and I bought the most beautiful gold leather boots. Oh my God, they're amazing. <laughs> and when I, when I put them on, I just feel, I feel like a rock star. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's so good. Wait, did you also buy a purse and a wallet and stuff and you mm-hmm. posted We're doing it? Upgrades. We're doing some yes, upgrades. That's yes. it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I forgot about that. Like adding upgrades to your life. And so we were all oh posting in the group about how oh what was your upgrade and this is what I did and I loved how you posted you took a picture and it was like treating yourself is just the absolute best so I can only imagine these boots and how they make you feel right yeah like you're just tapping into the alter ego <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And like with the boots, that was a big deal because that was, I've never spent that much money on a pair of shoes before. But the coolest thing about the handbag was that I stepped, I took another step in being like, I'm just going to find the perfect handbag. And I let go of what the cost was going to be. So yes. I wasn't shopping by price tag. I just found the perfect bag. And I didn't even know until I looked at the receipt afterwards. Like, and that was really powerful to be in a place where I knew that my, you know, like my finances and my business could support whatever bag I wanted. I was like, yeah, this is cool. And it was the coolest upgrade. Love my bag. I love that. Great. Love yeah. it. Okay. What would you consider your greatest achievement? Um, well, second to raising three children to the ages that they're at, I would say that Pro, like probably my greatest achievement is the healing that I've done in my body, despite what, you know, what I was told about my prognosis and things like that. You know, I consider myself to be fit, strong and healthy. And um, only maybe three years ago, I was certainly not in that space at all. And I think, um, you know, like I'm quite proud of the work that I've done in terms of um, self-healing and, you know, that's come from a foundation of self-care. So I'm, you know, it's, it's all very aligned in the work that I do as well, but I think it's a pretty, pretty cool achievement. So I love yeah. that, Charlotte. All right. And last question. What do you want people to know about Charlotte Heald? Well, what do you want to know about me? So I guess um, 
my work is very much, um, you know, my niche, as we talked about earlier, is um, I specialize in, in helping rural women to create empowered and sustainable lifestyles so that they can let go of the overwhelm and, and create the inspired, fulfilled lives that they're after. Um, and so aside from the one-to-one space, I'm, um, you know, moving into the one-to-many. And um, while my niche is specifically rural women, I, um, you know, the, the stuff that I teach in the space of self-care, you know, it would apply to, to most women. So if it's something that interests you, you might like to, to follow me on Instagram and, and see what I'm up to. And if you live in New Zealand, you might even be lucky enough to come along to one of my retreats. That's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, that's kind of where it's at at the moment. I love it. All right, Charlotte, if someone wants to jump in into your world, what is the best way to get a hold of you or some or any other social media handles you want to share? Probably just like through Instagram is pretty easy, charlotte.healed, very easy. Um, and you'll probably put that in the show notes, right? We will. We yeah. most definitely yeah. will. So- um, otherwise, via my website, www.charlottehealed.com. Wonderful. Charlotte, thank you so much for being on the Positioning to Profit podcast. I look forward to seeing what you'll create in the next six to 12 months. And I have no doubt that you'll impact countless women who need what you have. Cool. Thanks, Patty. Thank you. Thank you so much for checking out the Positioning to Profit podcast. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new episodes. And also, it would mean the world to me if you would take a quick moment to leave a rating and review on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast player. It really helps to get the word out about the podcast and, of course, the featured guests. And lastly, please make sure to connect with me on social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, I'm on all of them. And use hashtag positioning to profit so that I can (laughs) search you out and connect that way too. All right. Thanks so much. See you next time.